Hey guys, it's Claire Aiken with the Fiddly Fig Plant Resource Center, and today we're gonna to talk about a kind of controversial topic, and that's should you bottom water your fiddly fig? So subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ask your question in the comments below. So first let's talk about what is bottom watering. Now bottom watering is actually watering your plant from the bottom. So either your plant is in a saucer and you put the water into the saucer and your plant absorbs the water from that, or you actually take your whole container and submerge it into maybe your sink or a bathtub or a bucket or a big tray of water. You let it soak there for about 10 minutes and it absorbs the water. So there's a lot of people that like bottom watering and there's a lot of people that just say you should never do it for a fiddle leaf fig. Um, and so we'll kind of go through some of the pros and cons and why people might feel this way. The thing that I will say about any watering method is you should do what's right for you and your plant. A lot of people get uh, very upset and very um, passionate about the way to properly water a plant. And I think that's because it really depends on your container and it depends on the soil. So if you have a soil that really readily absorbs water, you're not gonna have a problem with the one cup watering method because as soon as you water one cup, it's just gonna disperse throughout your entire container and your whole container will be moist. However, if you have a very cactus-like, very dry, very barky soil, you may actually have a problem of top watering a small amount like in the one cup method and it doesn't disperse throughout your container and that way your plant can suffer because the roots that aren't getting wet can actually dry out and kind of desiccate. Like I said, bottom watering really depends on you know how you do it and it ranges from putting a small amount into the saucer beneath your plant or actually submerging your entire plant into water. The reason that I worry about bottom watering fiddly figs is because if you have a very moist soil or a soil that holds on to water, it can take a lot of time for your plant to dry out and that can cause root rot and fiddly figs. So where bottom watering could be okay for some plants, it could be problematic for fiddly figs. The reason that I recommend the one cup watering method, and I have a whole video on that if you're interested, is not because it's necessarily the best thing for the overall long-term health of your plant. The reason is because we see so many fiddly fig owners that are killing their plants by overwatering them. Now, fiddly figs are very, very prone to root rot, and that's the number one killer of fiddly figs. Um, out there. And so the one cup watering method really helps to prevent this. And so that's why I recommend it if you're having problems with root rot or if you're a novice. Now there are some plants that really love bottom watering and there's a few various reasons for that. So first, African violets love to be bottom watered because they really, really don't like water on their leaves. Their leaves are really fuzzy and they can be very damaged if you top water and you get water on the leaves. Another plant that loves to be bottom watered is fern. They like to be kept very evenly moist. The more water, the better. And so they love to be bottom watered and have access to water basically, you know, on an ongoing basis. Calathea are the same way. I bottom water all of my Calathea and I actually do it with a wick. So they're constantly sucking up all of the water that they need and they stay pretty moist. Those plants you may notice are pretty different than a fiddly fig. A fiddly fig really likes to be dry. They like kind of a barkier soil. They like to dry out in between waterings. And so that's one of the reasons bottom watering might not be the best method for a fiddle leaf fig. Some of the good things about bottom watering are that if you have a plant that is very uh, root bound and that has a lot of roots down at the bottom of the container, you may worry that if you top water, that your plant isn't getting water all the way at the bottom. And so if you have noticed in the grower container that the roots are coming out the holes or that you know a lot of your roots are compacted at the bottom, um, bottom watering may be a good solution for you. Another thing is you know, if you have a lot of leaves very low to the uh, soil and you don't wanna get water on the leaves, that can sometimes be a problem for fiddle leaf figs then bottom watering will avoid that problem. You know, in theory, if you bottom water, you can encourage the roots to grow downwards, which could improve your root health in the long run. What I will say about that is you don't wanna switch from top watering to bottom watering because with top watering, what you're doing is you're encouraging the roots to grow on the surface of the soil where they're typically getting watered. And then if you switch to bottom watering, you may face a big problem where all of a sudden your roots are not getting access to the moisture that they need. So you just wanna pick something and stick with it. 
uh, generally when it comes to your fiddle leaf fig. All right, so let's talk about some of the cons or some of the reasons that you wouldn't want to bottom water, especially a fiddle leaf fig. So the first thing that a lot of people talk about is this problem of a buildup of minerals or salts in your soil with bottom watering. And so what happens if you have minerals, hard water, or salt within your water source? If you bottom water, your plant is allowed to absorb the water, but then it holds on to all of the water that it absorbs. But when you top water, you're actually flushing out the whole system and letting it drain and you can kind of rinse out some of the salts and mineral deposits. So this can be a problem if you have hard water or if you use a water softener that puts some salt into your water. And so this is just something to be aware of. Uh, if you do bottom water, you may want to think about using filtered or distilled water and you may want to think about flushing your whole system um, for your plant maybe once every couple of months to avoid this problem. The second thing is that upper roots can really dry out. If you bottom water exclusively, all the roots at the top of your plant can really start to dry out and it can become sort of a problem. And so if you bottom water, I recommend top watering at least, you know, once a quarter when you maybe shower your fiddle leaf fig off or clean off the leaves, just to make sure that those top roots aren't gonna completely uh, dry out and become a problem for you. The reason that I don't like bottom watering is just because I have a lot of plants and bottom watering takes a lot of steps. You have to prepare the container, you have to move your plant, you have to soak it, you have to remember to go back and take it out of the water, then you have to drain it, and then you have to put it back to its original location. It's messy in my opinion, and it takes a lot of steps and there's, there's a lot of ways that it could go wrong, whereas quickly top watering for me can't go wrong. And so for me, I think it's overcomplicated, it's messy, and it takes too long. It's also hard for really large plants. So if you have a very big fiddly fig that you can't pick up, you're not gonna be able to submerge it in a bucket of water. Of course, you could bottom water through like a saucer method, but uh, for those very large plants, typically the saucer isn't gonna give you enough um, depth of water to let your plant absorb a lot and you'd be doing it over and over as your plant absorbed it. And so for me, it's just not my favorite method. So the reasons that you would want to bottom water a fiddly fig are that you like to bottom water your plants. And so if you like to bottom water, keep doing it. If your plant looks good, don't let anybody tell you that bottom watering isn't right for a fiddly fig because it certainly can be. Um, if you have a root bound plant, or soil shrinkage, which happens if your plant gets very, very dry, your soil can kind of shrink and dry out and pull away from the sides of your container. That means when you top water, the water may just go around your root ball and around your uh, compacted soil and your plant may not be getting any of that water. So that's a perfect thing where you may wanna submerge your entire container and really loosen up that soil and get it wet again and soak your whole root ball. Another reason that is a great reason to bottom water is if you're worried about fungus gnats. Now fungus gnats live in the surface of your soil if it is kept too moist over time or if you live in a very, very humid environment. So if you have fungus gnats living in the surface of your soil, you may wanna think about bottom watering because that way the surface of your soil is gonna dry out and the gnats are gonna go away. Another reason you may wanna bottom water a fiddly fig is if it got very dry or if it's droopy or if it's in kind of a state of dry shock, you may wanna just submerge it for 10 minutes, let it really soak up all the water it needs and get it back on the right path. And another, maybe the final reason is if you do know that you have perfect water and you don't have minerals, you don't have salt, you don't have a lot of chlorine, then that would be the perfect uh, kind of candidate for bottom watering on an exclusive basis because you wouldn't be facing one of the main problems of bottom watering, which is this, this issue of a buildup of salts or chlorine or minerals. So let's talk about the reasons to avoid bottom watering. And so one of the reasons I don't bottom water my fiddly figs is a lot of them are just very large and it would be too hard. I don't have a container that big and I can't move my plant, it's just too heavy. Uh, another thing is if it's, you know, I don't have the time. I have so many plants that I don't have time to move. It would take me all day, there's just no way. Um, another thing is it's messy. So if I were to put my plants into my bathtub, it would get dirt in the bathtub, which I don't wanna clean up. <laughs> so, you know, I find it just to be a little bit messy. And then as you're moving your plants back to where they live, you, you know, are dripping water throughout your house. It's just more trouble than it needs to be, in my opinion. Um, another really important reason is if you wanna fertilize your plant accurately. So one of the big problems with bottom watering is it's hard to fertilize your plant because you're basically using a hydroponic watering system where you would have to put fertilizer into the water itself and then you wouldn't know how much your plant is absorbing and so it's very hard to accurately fertilize your plant with bottom watering. 
However, uh, if you do want to bottom water exclusively, I recommend just using fertilizer. We make fiddle leaf fig plant food and you put one teaspoon into one cup of water and then you could just pour it over the top after you're done bottom watering, after your plant is moist throughout. Another big reason to avoid bottom watering in a fiddle leaf fig is if you have very slow draining soil. And so if you use like a miracle Grow indoor uh, potting soil, it holds a lot of water. And so if you were to bottom water, your plant may never dry out and you may actually start to have problems with uh, root rot in your fiddly fig because the soil would hold on to so much moisture for so long that your roots would get root rot. So if you have very chlorinated or salty water, bottom watering is just probably going to be a problem when it comes to that buildup of minerals and salts. And so these are just some of the reasons you would avoid bottom watering a fiddly fig. Okay. So say you've gone through all the pros and cons and you've thought this through and you want to go ahead and bottom water your fiddly fig. What do you do? So the first thing is you want to decide whether or not it's time to water your plant. And so the way to do that is to use a moisture meter. So you would stick the moisture meter about halfway between the, the trunk of your plant and the exterior of the container, about halfway um, in diameter, and then about two to three inches down into the soil and see what number it reads on your moisture meter. If it is a four or less, then it's time to water. Then you would want to fill your receptacle with water. So, you know, your bucket or your sink or your bathtub or wherever you're going to bottom water your plant, you would want to fill that up. And then you take your plant and you put it in. Of course, you have to have drainage holes for this to work. They should be at least one inch in diameter and multiple drainage holes are going to be better for bottom watering your plant. Um, and then you just let your plant sit for a while. And so check it in about 10 minutes using the moisture meter again and see if it's giving you a reading that uh, your plant or your soil is moist. If not, wait 10 more minutes. I really, really caution you not to wait too long. Some people out there say you could leave it overnight. I would never do that. I've seen plants die being left in water overnight. Um, I would really cap it at 30 minutes. Um, if your plant has not evenly dispersed moisture throughout the container in 30 minutes, that means your soil is too barky and it is not uh, basically using osmosis well enough to have bottom watering really work for you. Um, and so in that case, I would just not bottom water at all. And greater than 30 minutes, you're really gonna risk drowning the roots of your plant. My mom one time took a bunch of her plants outside and put them in the rain, and they sat in water for maybe three or four hours, and a lot of them died because your roots actually need air. They need to breathe air. And if they sit underwater, they will drown and it can really damage your plant. You know, check in 30 minutes tops, then remove it, let it completely drain, and then put it back in its original uh, location. So if you have a saucer underneath your plant, make sure to drain that water because that can cause root rot as well. And then as a final step, you may just think about fertilizing from the top to make sure that your fiddle leaf fig is getting enough fertilizer to grow. So three big things I just want to caution. If you do decide to bottom water your fiddle leaf fig, please change the water between plants. So if you're bottom watering all the plants in your collection, you can actually spread problems like a bacterial or a viral disease or funguses between your plant if you were to use the same you know bathtub full of water between plants so make sure to change your water between plants so that you don't communicate any diseases between them uh, the second is don't use too hot or too cold water kind of warm lukewarm water is the best you can actually shock your plant's roots if you use anything too cold certainly you don't want to use anything too hot so check the temperature of the water since you are really submerging your plant into the water it's more of an issue than top watering with uh, too cold of water and then don't forget to leave your plants. You know, if you leave your plants, they will die. So do not leave them submerged, especially a fiddle leaf fig. So set a timer, don't walk away for too long. Make sure to remove your plant, properly drain it and dump the water from the saucer so that your root system can begin to dry out and aerate again. So the answer to the question, should you bottom water a fiddle leaf fig is if you want to, and if you're aware of the risks and if your plant is happy once you've been doing this for a while. So if you want to give it a try, you know, do so at your own risk and check your plant. If it looks good then you know good good on you uh, you know don't ever be afraid to have people tell you, you have to water a certain way you know we're all different our soil is different our plants are different the conditions the light the temperature the humidity are all different so what works for you may not work for somebody else so just be kind out there and if you want to bottom water go ahead and I wish you the very best of luck please subscribe to our channel give this video a thumbs up and ask your questions about your fiddly fig in our Facebook group thanks for watching and I'll see you next time